You know, that's that's a great question. Uh, it's one that that I think about a lot. You know, is it is it bad hiring? Is it a bad employee? A uh, bad fit? Are they coming from companies who are are uh, they're used to having uh, meetings after meetings? You know, staff meetings, marketing meetings, sales meetings, meetings about having meetings. You know, like calling clients, calling old leads doing prospecting or just saving that time for stuff that you like to do. It doesn't even have to be work. It could be a hobby you like. I'm spending time with your family. All that time that you spent in meetings, you could use in other areas. It's just a culture shock when you come here because I despise meetings. We just don't have a lot of meetings. Uh, now we used to, uh, we used to have a meeting, you know, uh, every week with with the staff, every meeting with the every week with the office. You know, if you give if you give your team an hour meeting, they're going to cram an hour's worth of stuff in that meeting. Uh, typically, uh, they're a huge waste of time, and you 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 can get everything you need to go over done in about ten minutes, but you've wasted an hour. So what I like to do is is take those hour meetings, cut them in half and then cut it in half again. You can certainly get everything done that you need to do in 15 minutes. I mean, you're talking every day anyway already. So uh, why have to have an, you know, an official meeting with the team? People are gonna talk about communication, uh, and I'm not saying communication's bad at all, but you're talking every day. So if you're talking every day, what, what need is it to have that official that official hour long meeting every week. It's just a complete waste of time. We actually, we did have a meeting today and no offense to the people that were there, but uh, it really would have took us about 10 minutes to go over everything we went over. Everything after that was just, was just fill. Now it's nice to get together once in a while and touch base, but certainly your time could be spent in, in other areas. Time is just, it's just so valuable. If you abuse it or let people abuse your time, or waste your own time. You're not going to get that time back. You only have so long to live and you're spending it in meetings. You're spending all this time in meetings, just a complete waste of time. And you could be spending it in other areas with so much time available in a day. There's only so much time. It's vitally important that you spend the time on areas that you want to. You know, do you go to that large commercial estimate or do you go to the one bedroom residential estimate? Either answer could be right. Either answer could be wrong. It's not, you're not going out just based off of the amount or the value of the project or what you can get out of it. There's so much more to it than that. And this is why I'm successful in some areas and I'm dangerous in some areas is because I don't think like everybody else. I don't care about that large job that you can make a killing off of. I, I, I'm directly focused on the things that are most important to our company and the things that most hurt our company. Everything in the middle, it doesn't mean anything, so you forget about it. I'm also very good at making procedural changes, but most importantly, I make them very quickly. So this has been the struggle for people coming into our company where you finally get used to something and then I change it right away. It's been a huge issue for some people. So, you know, they, they're working on perfecting everything that they, they work on. And then along comes me and I use the information that I have, the data that we get, and I completely change everything. Could be after a day, could be after a week. Um, I could look at something over the weekend and change it all on Monday. That's been one of the major struggles for people. And that's why overthinking things will cripple your company. Overthinking cripples creativity, um, and it's going to make you miss out on things that could potentially be an awesome thing for your company, but more importantly, for yourself. So in, in our terms, we're a painting company, so let me put it this way. So say you're doing um, 20 estimates a week. You, you're probably driving to them. You're letting the customers dictate where you're going, when you're going, how you're going to do it. They're, they're getting, you know, they're telling you they're getting three, four other estimates and they're basing everything that they do off of price. You have to go back to your office after you've done your, your song and dance in front of them at, at their house. You didn't set the expectations. You have to go back. Now you have to drive back to the office or maybe you do them in your truck. You have to spend time writing up the estimate. You have, and this is a 20 estimates now, so imagine all the time that you're spending wasting uh you have to follow up on them because that's the way that you do things right so now you're calling uh the people who you thought were so nice to you now 
won't answer your phone calls or emails or text messages. And you, you know, you do your follow-ups two or three times and then you finally realize one day they're never calling you back. And do you know your closing rate? So if you know your closing rate and you know, if it's 40%, 50%, you know half of the estimates you do, you're not winning any, anyway. So why waste the time on all that hubbub? all going out, driving around, you know, treating every phone call like it's a, the golden ticket coming in. It's just not. You, you have to realize you're wasting 50% of your time on pipe dreams that are never going to happen. So nobody wants to hear this. No customer wants to hear this. But you can't treat every phone call that comes into your office the same. They're not the same. The commercial one might be more important than the residential one. The residential one might be more important than the commercial one. It depends on what the goals are of your company, but more importantly, what are your goals? Do you know what your goals are? Do you know your target market? Do you know where you sell your jobs the most? Do you know the highest profit margin for the area that you work in? You have to know all these things. If you don't, and you just do everything, you know, we're a, I'm a painter, but I do carpentry, I do floors, I do plumbing, I can put a pond in for you. No, no, you can't because you can't do all those different things and do them all well and profitable, plus have time for your family and, and your company. There's just no, there's nothing wrong with freeing up your time, knowing what, what you want, going for it and not spending time just because somebody else thinks that they want to have meetings and that's the way that every other company does it or you know, there should be a Monday morning meeting, there should be papers, there should be this, there should be that, there should be all these processes. That doesn't mean it's the way it has to be. You can do things your way, the things that are most important to you. Uh, another area that people seem to struggle with in, in our company is, even though I, I do think long term and I'm, I'm not going day by day, I change my mind a lot. So I don't even look at my calendar until uh, that Monday morning. I don't schedule anything as far as customers on Mondays because that's the day I spend time on marketing, um, whatever kind of office things I need to get done, the administration help, whatever I need to do that day. But I do schedule those, so I know the times that I'm doing that. It's a definitive time. It's not just up in the air where people can just ask any question that they want. Uh, but that is the day that I look at my schedule for my estimates that week, and that's the only day. So our estimates are tentative until that day. We'll certainly schedule them and it's in our books and everything, but we'll take a look at it and we may switch things around. We may take one estimate that was from me and give it to Tanya or, or somebody else, or we may take one estimate and tell them, you know, this just isn't good for our company. We're going to refer you to somebody else. There's, there's nothing wrong with saying no, not just saying no, but offer a referral to another company where somebody can help them out. We want to help people out. If it's something that we can't help with, we, it's, it's time to be honest right there. You know, how many appointments have you have you gone to and they're a complete waste of time? Wouldn't it have been better to be honest with the people instead of having that weird feeling that this just job doesn't seem right for our company? Uh, I went out, I used to go out to every estimate, no matter what it was, I was doing, you know, 20, 30, um, sometimes 35 estimates a week, but I'm looking at jobs we would are not good at we wouldn't do um, and some of them we took and guess what happens you get customers who aren't happy with what you did uh, or you have painters on the job who don't like the job they're doing or we're scrambling around looking for people who can do that type of work and you could have been spending that time that you're on now a job you don't even do working on the things that make the company the most money that's what you need to do. Not waste time, not running around like a chicken with its head cut off because if somebody called you looking for an estimate, you know, you should have qualification questions when somebody calls you to make sure that it's, it's at least pre-qualified for the type of work that you do. You have a 50% chance of being right and you have a 50% chance of being wrong and there is no right answer. So all the time that you spend trying to get everything correct every day, trying to be a perfectionist, I hate to give it to you straight, but there, there, there is no perfection. It's not going to happen. The only thing you can do as an owner is, is make the decision that feels right at that time and go. Go with it. It might not be right. It might be wrong. It could be right. You don't know. You don't know till you do it. So you have to just do it. You can't get caught up. You can't get caught up in a monotony of perfectionism. It's not going to happen. It's going to slow you down and it's going to have and lead to missed opportunities. So again, and this is, these are all the, the reasons that people struggle when they come here. You have to think a different way 
when you work with us, it, it's not always the same. It's not going to always be the same. And then when you think it is, it changes. So as long as you know your biggest vulnerabilities and your biggest assets, you got it made. I wanted to end this here uh, with, with a quote that I, I read in a, in a really good book. And it's, quote, when you hold rigid demands about the way things have got to be, you have no margin for deviation or error. You leave yourself vulnerable to experiencing exaggerated emotional disturbance when things in life just don't go your way. And that is the perfect sentence for why people sometimes struggle when they work here.